Hi everyone, Sandman here. A couple of days ago, New Labola sent me a link to a particular article that I'm adding in the description below. And the article is called, Women Take More Sick Days Than Men, and it's from The Telegraph in the UK. And here's the first paragraph from that particular article. Research shows that the average man takes a total of 140 days off sick during their careers, while women phone in sick 189 times. And despite this, women are more likely to try their hardest to make it to their desks and feel guilty if they succumb to illness. Male employees, on the other hand, are more likely to be called up by their bosses because of their poor track records for taking too many sick days. Stomach bugs, dizziness, and viruses are the most common ailments which strike down the British workforce. So let me get this straight. In Britain, male employees take less sick days than their female counterparts, yet they're the ones being written up and shamed by their bosses in the first place. And they're the ones responsible enough to continue coming to the workplace. I didn't think too much about this article over the last few days until I was thinking about a new topic for a MGTOW video. And I oddly remembered a video I saw many years ago about the man cold. And I'm adding a link to that particular video in the description as well. I remember watching that video in a room full of about 80% women and 20% men. And the video exaggerates the effects of a common cold on a man. And I'm sure that men and women basically feel the same type of pain when they get sick. Yet men are shamed for it. We're expected to show up for work even if we can barely stand. And wives shame men for getting sick as well as employers. It's almost like we aren't allowed to feel pain in the first place. We're supposed to suck it up buttercup and go our own merry way. When I was younger, I completely believed this horseshit about making it to school and work no matter what. And I even won the attendance award while I was in middle school. And the odd thing is, when I went up to get my prize, which was a fancy sticker to add to my sticker collection, there were only two other boys up there getting the prize with me. Where were the girls? My perfect attendance record was a celebration of my subjugation at school, as well as my disposability. And all I got was a stupid pin or a stupid sticker. And yet today, many men continue to fluff up their chests so the state and its lackeys can tack on prize ribbons onto soldiers, students, and athletes. And more often than not, it's usually men that get disposability awards. And for all three years while I was in middle school, it was only boys that actually won the attendance awards. Yet later in life, when I became an adult, I was often ridiculed by women if I was complaining about getting sick. One time, I even had the flu so bad that it lasted a month and a half. It was absolutely brutal. And after three weeks, I started complaining about having a virus that just wouldn't go away. And the women around me would make baby sounds and laugh at me if I brought up to any length that I was sick. Mind you, it was my own fault for not going to the doctor and getting medication for the illness in the first place. And in the end, I went and got antibiotics after about a month and a half. The bottom line is, men aren't supposed to get sick. And if we do get sick, we're supposed to basically get laughed at and ridiculed if we make a stink about it. As if the added emotional stress to our immune system is somehow going to make us feel better and make the flu and the cold go away faster. What I also found amusing about the Telegraph article is the line where it says, Women try hard to make it to their desks and feel guilty for not getting to work more than men. But should we really believe that lie? If they really felt more shame and guilt, then wouldn't they just use less sick days? Someone please enlighten me about the logic and reason behind this particular statement. I also did a little bit of research to see if the man cold or the man flu meant that common illnesses were worse for men. And the third link in the description is called The Truth About Man Colds, or So They Say. Here are some lines from that particular article. When Gina Gallo, a school librarian in Louisiana, gets sick, she can take care of herself. She gets her own medicine, makes her own food, and deals with it, as she puts it. But when her fiancé gets a cold, she says, he has a complete system breakdown. The world stops and the whining is incessant, she says. I am expected to bring him food, take care of him, and generally treat him like a baby that he is. Coined in the UK, man cold or man flu is a tongue-in-cheek expression to describe a man's way of dealing with the common cold. For instance, men who are sick may hole up under the covers, sniffling for sympathy and insisting that it's more than just a cold. While well, women who are sick will carry on with their daily routines. Researchers at England's University of Glasgow studied 1,700 people and found that men were more likely than women to overrate their cold symptoms. The researchers theorized that men and women have different thresholds for perceiving and reporting symptoms, rather than actual differences in symptoms. That is, their cold symptoms were absolutely the same. 
but men and women responded differently to those same symptoms. That's what the article has to say, but I have a theory I'd like to share about the man flu. I think that most of us men suck up the cold symptoms for a really long time, and only report it to others if they get really bad. When a man complains about the pain, you know it's got to be bad. Yet even then, we're belittled for feeling pain. And the WebMD article also insults men by saying that we're out of touch with our feelings, and so that's why we complain more when we get sick, because we don't know how to reconcile the pain with our emotional state. But I think that's total bullshit as well. I think that women might actually be mentally confused when a big strong man complains like a woman. Her instinct is to help him out, but another part of her brain says, this is a man, he doesn't need your help. And he needs to man up and take the pain. And the reason men don't tend to go to the doctor is due to the fact that we instinctively don't want to waste resources. Resources that in the past meant the survival of the tribe or band of humans. Disposability is probably hardwired into the consciousness of most men, just like hypergamy is hardwired into the minds of most women. Anyways, a few days ago I spoke about the fact that if a woman lowers her voice, that she's more likely to be heard by a man, because a man takes lower frequency voices to be more threatening, and thus they get his attention. I guess the same could be said about men with high-pitched voices when they're sick. And men with higher or effeminate sounding voices should in theory be given more attention by women. So when a man is sick and he whines at a higher frequency, he is essentially asking for her for help in a way that a woman understands. But at the same time, both socially and culturally, women don't like weak men. So a sick man complaining is not only annoying to women, but it also gets her attention because he whines at a higher frequency that diverts her attention away from other things. Why do you think boys have higher voices so their mothers can come to them if there's a problem? And the moment their Adam's apple drops and their voices go lower, they're on their own. Mothers tend to respond to them less in that case. This could also explain why gay men tend to attract female friends, especially if their voices are higher. A gay man with a higher voice might also sound more attractive to other dudes as well, as less threatening. Because oftentimes it's hard to be attracted to someone if you're simultaneously threatened and scared by them. Men with high-pitched voices might actually be turning on the gaydar and other men as a sort of mating call. It's funny how the pitch in our voice can get others to treat us completely differently. I didn't originally plan on going onto this voice tangent, but it's an interesting one, nonetheless. I thought the bottom line about man-colds is that men don't complain as often when they get sick unless there's a serious ailment. And the higher-pitched sound a man makes when he's sick often disarms women, so they come running to help him. But today, the average woman is much older than in the past. And in the past, families were often larger, so if your wife didn't come to your aid, when you were sick, then you often had a daughter to help you out, just in case. So that behavioral trick might have worked back then. For me, a rational reason not to take medication when I get sick is due to taking penicillin, which is often like a nuclear bomb that kills both the good parts as well as the bad parts of your body. I also used to believe that toughing it out with a disease would increase the quality of your immune system so that it wouldn't get bored and start causing other problems, like causing you allergies. As I got close to finishing this video, ironically I found yet another article from The Telegraph called Man Flu is No Myth, as Scientists Prove Men Suffer More from Disease. And that article is from 2010. So I guess we now have scientific evidence that men feel cold and flu symptoms more seriously. Here are some statements from that particular article. A team at the University of Cambridge came up with the theory by applying a mathematical model to the various factors that characterize males and females. It predicts that the adventurous lifestyle of a male means that he's basically more exposed to disease, but paradoxically this reduces his immunity. And the reason is that they invest more energy in maintaining the ability to reproduce while ill, and also take the view they will be reinfected quickly, so do not have the same type of strong immune systems that women do. Dr. Oliver Restef of the University of Cambridge also had this to say. In many cases, males tend to be more prone to get infected or less able to clear infection. So there you have it, folks. Not only does society make us disposable, but so does nature. This could also explain why for every 10 men that died during the Black Death in Europe, only 9 women died from it simultaneously. Nature has made sure that female numbers in a population are higher to increase the odds of survivability for the entire species. Another interesting thing about males is that if we have a strong immune system that clears a cold or infection too rapidly, then we will simply get another infection to replace the one that was there before. What I find shocking is that we as men keep a loaded sexual gun, even when we're sick. And we can't seem to lose out on the chance to procreate, and if we do, then we'll regret it. 
I've also noticed personally that sex feels better when I often have a mild cold or flu. Is it any coincidence or design by nature? Who knows? Anyways, that's all I've got to say for today's video. Thanks again to New Labola for inspiring this video. And hopefully your medical background as a nurse can also shed some additional light on this particular subject. Anyways, thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.